Soul Tribe. Welcome to your Divine Guidance Reading, where we are spiritual as fuck. If we haven't met yet, my name is High Priestess Mary, Psychic Medium and Divine Channeler. Hope to bring you a message. Now, always remember, my messages are candid, unscripted, but they are also timeless. So please, tap into your instincts. Listen to your intuition. If there's anything that I talk about that doesn't make any sense, totally fine. Do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you're always welcome to stick around and enjoy the show. Ooh, today could be uh, a little bit interesting. I, I'm getting this, you know, the emoji of mind blown. But there's actually something that the divine and your spirit guides have been really trying to show something about you. As I went to uh, shuffle, uh, I got the moon oracle here and two cards just flew straight out at me we got a full moon capricorn and full moon eclipse the end of a tough cycle approaches conclusions are within reach uh some of you guys may have been vying trying to get um somebody else to go along with you or you know kind of wondering why people may not be going along with you but there's something about the energy that you are in it's going to start um speeding up and there's going to be a sense of acceleration it's kind of, one of these things where you may feel as though you're going to lose your breath but it's not necessarily a bad thing because at the base over here we have new moon um a new start is coming and you know given that we're still a week away from the new moon in gemini what else do we have up here there we go the energy is gaining momentum it's a time for healing with the balsamic moon and hold your vision fixed moon it is kind of cool we're not necessarily going way too astrological uh, when it just comes to coming up with ideas for what kind of energy that we might be in but i actually have the sense that um it's tough you've been trying to find ways to have good conversations with yourself you're trying to be honest with yourself and it's actually really really well motivated but there's something about the way that you've been going about what makes you think that should make you happy as opposed to being happy yourself. When I went to go, um, you know, tune into the energy before I started the camera, I went ahead and pre-shuffled and I got this Queen of Swords at the base of the deck along with the card of judgment because you may have had a habit of critiquing yourself or criticizing your past actions, but you're basing it on a past version of you. Again, we've been talking a lot with this death energy that's been um, showing up a lot within the collective readings this particular week. And it's like, why are you critiquing yourself against a version of you that doesn't exist? You're being asked to have a very different look at um, how it is you're viewing these energies. Like sometimes I joke, I go in and out of it when um, I'm trying to channel. I always try to talk to different versions of myself. The village of berries, my young hella Christian version of berries is very different than my uh, let's explore the world of sex, drugs, and rock and roll berries. Like, you know, they're constantly at odds with themselves, but it's kind of my own little way of uh, keeping some semblance of balance and accountability within my life. But something about um, whoever this message is going to resonate for, you're leaning a little bit too much into a past version of yourself that you may have been ashamed at uh, a previous belief system, or maybe you are holding yourself back because you're trying to honor some uh, belief system. Because at the base over here, um, you know, the nine of cups flew straight out and there's this little bit of an energy and it's sort of like you know oh who's a good puppy like you may have been trying to get attention from your parents from your friends from your followers whomever just to kind of prove that you're good like this has been a little bit more uh dependent on getting external validation or at least hoping that if someone says you're good it means you're not bad and it's kind of, one of these things where i think you consciously are aware of this but it frustrates you because sometimes you subconscious still subconsciously still feel this way it can be a little bit irritating when we're trying to let go of a version of ourselves and move into the new reality that we're opening ourselves up to and worried that like, what if I am doing the wrong thing? And you're using metrics, again, outdated metrics to make you feel better about what you're doing next is going to make sense because how you're going to get validation is going to change how you should receive validation that will change like and it's like well what should i be looking for like and really you have to ask yourself what is it about your assumptions about yourself that you're holding yourself back but 
it's kind of it feels safe there's something about this energy because with this eight of swords leading up to uh an i want to say nine of swords but it's really uh, a four it's slow like i'm talking about some fast-paced energy like you know the, everything's gaining momentum and it's sort of like your body is going slow-mo but the world is speeding up around you and you're trying to find the balance making sure that you don't get caught up in something that will send you off course because after that we do have the hierophant and this is a mountain goat and have you actually seen how mountain goats traverse on almost vertical climbs like i to some degree i still don't understand it it seems almost antithetical to nature to see this uh to see a sheep or at least seeing like a goat being able to traverse such like ridiculous rocks like i can barely climb a rock how the hell is this four hoofed whatever supposed to be able to do it there's something about the way that you've been assuming things because of your own personal experience what other people had taught you and it's inadvertently self-limiting so let's go a little bit deeper i'm going to grab the sacred symbols we got the card of time which i'm hearing you know time standing still but you got to have some courage as everything starts to speed up like there's still a voice within you that thinks that you cannot trust yourself that's something we do actually need to address there's some kind of karmic feminine energy that's made you feel it's okay to allow other people to meddle in your energy to meddle in your thoughts and your belief systems this is very similar to someone who's under uh hypnosis i don't know if uh there's anybody within this collective who has practiced either self-hypnosis or done hypnosis as a party trick or even gone to um, hypnotherapy uh, it's a quite an honor uh, for someone to be allowed to get into your divine feminine energy because it can create the lie that yeah you know I might have a different opinion about how it is I want to behave but I somehow gave this individual consent to mess within my feminine energy and there are people who use hypnosis as a toy sometimes for entertainment but it's kind of one of these things where you need to actually figure out where that hypnotic frequency lies so that you can learn how to take control of yourself that's the wow okay something just like spat in my eye right now that was not cool um this is the the brain state that children are technically in i think you know one of you were able to helpfully correct me the theta brain wave state from ages zero to six there is something about re-entering that um mental space because uh, a parent told you to do something or maybe somebody harmed you in this particular energy or as an adult you allowed somebody else to access this level of you and if they accessed you hello karmically because i think some of you guys have um knowing how to close the door so that you're no longer succumb because some of you guys actually do have somebody who's hypnotically fucking with you in the background i don't even know if it's even malicious it's sort of like um when you have a home and ants get in and it's sort of like it's not like you're leaving all the doors open or you're leaving all the windows open but sometimes they find little cracks in the system and you know if you're seeing actually uh, issues with vermin within your home that's actually a physical confirmation that somebody's meddling within your feminine energy and we need to pinpoint it down and close it off and no longer give anybody else divine permission to access it you are growing up and you're getting being given a chance to finally get yourself anchored in healthfully so that um you can tell yourself what you were doing is totally fine especially if what you're doing is helping you feel good about yourself and it does resonate with your overall purpose that <laughs> the card of courage came back like it takes courage to grow up it takes courage to stand up to adults it takes courage to stand up to people that we once put on a pedestal but that's the problem with a pedestal that if you put someone and you elevate anybody above you you become their fan and chances are this person Person, they'll be happily uh, they'll happily receive all of your accolades but we sometimes have the karmic assumption that if we put someone on a pedestal that they're going to repay us in kind and that's not how energy works okay i'm gonna cut you know shuffle here but we have eight of wands three of pentacles like who you're going to be collaborating with needs to change like it needs to change like whether if this is a new job situation a new community um a new project like just new friendships all in 
um, in general. And because a past version of you, maybe you had to embrace change and you didn't want to, and you didn't like the idea of doing it, and you didn't like the idea that you didn't set up your computer properly. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, some of you guys are actually still um, a little bit overstimulated right now, I'm hearing. If you notice that you're knocking into shit, um, and forgetting vital stuff. If you're just kind of yawning, but trying to breathe, listen to those signals. Your body is trying to let you know that it's overstimulated. Breathe. Whoa. Like your body is still trying to adapt to this climate. And it's one of these things where it's important to slow your body down, be more mindful of your surroundings, how your body's reacting to these surroundings. Because again, when you go to meet people and you're still feeling anxious, a lot of that um, excess energy still can show up within your body. We do have the sun and underneath there, oh, six of cups in the reverse. Like when uh, Jupiter entered Gemini, like this is a very nostalgic energy. And it can show up in many different ways, whether this is just weird random memories cropping up to the surface, remembering the good old days, or even just when you're thinking about somebody that you walked away from, maybe somebody that you had like a bad falling out with, someone that you declared as an abuser and you don't want them um, a part of your life journey anymore. Like sometimes the good old days do crop up. Part of it is because you have people within your shadow aspect, that theta hypnotic state that people still have subconscious access to. You're actually reading into their thoughts and it's gonna be important during this time to shed a light on who am I? There's a huge call like within this collective to every morning, check in with yourself. Who am I? You know, I am Roz, I am Berries. And it's like you taking a moment just to remind you who you actually are so that you don't necessarily have any kind of, um, I'm hearing like mental invasion. Like it's going to be important to really protect your energies um, during this, uh, yeah, like during this little uh, timeline, especially today, because a lot of people are going through it and it's an ask for you to, mind your own peace. Oh, and the energy suddenly shifted as I went to cut. What do we have down here? Oh, wow. Magic and the King of Swords. Like this King keeps popping up, even just in the shadow, just having an honest conversation with yourself. And even just like this energy isn't mine and feeling okay that this energy does not belong to you. Because when we have the card of magic, I always think about the way that you use you use your, your skills, your talents, your interests in the 3D reality, whether that's through your own personal sense of artistry or in your career. Again, something that's interested you. This is our STEAM acronym, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and the Mathematics. Below that, good fortune. Like some of you guys may not be able to fathom that you could have a career in something that has to do with your overall purpose or if it's not even a career just finding ways to just express yourself and not having to worry about money like you're overcoming a karmic habit of believing that you have to over criticize yourself but it's actually just a foreign energy a foreign entity a past karmic cord that over criticized you like i said this is you overcoming karmic feminine energy with king of swords with the lovers being absolutely honest with how somebody treated you. You don't have to be mean about it. And you know, you don't necessarily even have to feel vindictive about the person, but you're just being asked if you were in an abusive situation, it's okay to label it that way. It's not that you need to spew it all into the zeitgeist to try and get everybody's attention because if you get everybody's attention on you, it actually confuses you as opposed to just feeling comfortable within yourself knowing just because I went through this, this isn't my label. The I am is not anything to do with a label. Like you can say, I have been abused. I have been through difficult situations, but that's not your identity. When you understand who you are as the great I am, I am me. I am the person who chose to enter into this particular incarnation to pick up the building blocks of the 3D and see what I can do with it. 
This is you learning how to differentiate your own core identity against the things that you have experienced within this 3D reality. All right, what the fuck is going on around you? Oh, wow, Wheel of Fortune in the reverse along with Lucky. Like, uh, I'm actually, mm, whether if you are aware of this or not, because this is a little bit more on the shadow side, like sort of the inner knowing, you're just trying to figure out, I'm picking up all this weird ass shit. I don't think it's mine. Um, There's actually a lot of people around you. They're not doing well. They're actually feeling really stuck. And on the surface, maybe they appear as though things are fine or because horseshoe os also shows to me the the ideas of radicalism you know they say radicalism is more of a horseshoe than it is like a full straight spectrum and you may be noticing people around you they're actually holding tighter onto things that are karmic holding tighter to their belief systems that they um they know something is changing subconsciously but because they have no governship of their own spirituality it's fucking with them like I was talking about yeah, I nearly knocked over like you know a bunch of my my tarot cards and if you're knocking into shit you're accidentally injuring yourself like not even realizing that you have like you know a cupboard door open you go Punk, the struggle is real like that's your body telling you it needs to be regulated that you're hyper stimulated rest Ooh, breathe, check in with yourself because a lot of you guys are dealing with projections, especially as you are doing better. People know what, it, you're not even rubbing it in their face. They just know you're doing better and they're dealing with this sense of jealousy but I really like that, you know, as I try to, you know, swim between these two energies, it's kind of like I'm standing on the, the border of your own energy and sort of looking out and it's like behind you, it's like, okay, we're rebuilding the kingdom. The shark moat, you know, is nice and healthy. But when you look out into the rest of the world outside of your own energy, it is chaos. It is death. It is graphic. It is just a... I don't know why it's just like everything's just gone wrong for these people but they're continuing to hold on to a previous ideology but it's stopping them and in some ways this is giving you a chance to continue to move farther and farther away they're stuck in the mud and that's for your own benefit um and it's going to be important it's a little bit of that the biblical story of Lot, where he was instructed to leave the town of Sodom and Gomorrah, and nobody was permitted to look behind them. And, you know, Lot's wife, she looked behind. She she was just, she was a little bit too attached to what was going on with the city behind her. And, you know, the legend says she turned into a pillar of salt. Whether if this story is real or not, it doesn't matter. It's actually a story to help you understand how important it is to step into a portal of your safety. That you cannot feel guilty that you left people behind. Because if you actually know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, oh my god, they're all assholes. Like, they were all assholes and they were like you know even lot was terrible to his own children when he was living in the city of sodom and gomorrah so don't feel bad for these people like it's not as though hell and fire and brimstone is actually going to happen to these people it's just the instruction for you don't look behind you don't bring the past with you walk forward in faith knowing that you've done the right thing you do not need to um be stuck with a sense of survival's guilt these people you gave them as much time as you felt it was warranted and now you have cut cords and you're moving on what's going on with your situation <laughs> got an ace of swords along with a card of psychic like i'm really just hoping that this particular message is just it's confirmational you've been trying to look for that inner unity trying to understand the masculine side of yourself to the feminine side the hypnotic side to your conscious thinky thoughts like you've been working so hard on being able to enmesh your own inner identity and this is just again confirmation or if, if anything to continue to encourage you that you actually know what makes you happy and the less that you are dependent on other people oh good for you you did a good thing like that's patronizing and in some ways it's sort of like 
Oh my God. Eight and nine year old kids. They're awesome. Like they're at that age where, you know, they've kind of gotten out of that, you know, that uh, theta brainwave state. They're trying to develop their own personality. Um, and it's kind of the age where they're totally a kid, but they want to be treated like an adult. And then, you know, the next 10 years just negotiating as to what the fuck that's supposed to mean with their parents. But, um, eight and nine year olds like that can be a, a, an amazing age where kids they want to start being treated like an adult they want to cosplay the idea of being grown up many of them can come into this sort of sense of self-identity of no i'm going to be responsible or i'm going to do my own thing like you know and those two ideas are not always congruent thank you all your parents <laughs> thank you to your parents and thank you to you who are parents <laughs> who are willing just to kind of side eye the kids and be like all right little one we'll see how that that works for you. <laughs> but there is some humor embracing a little bit of the chaos, especially with some of these energies. They're still going to be um, a part of your 3D reality, especially if this is family. And just knowing that you can have better energetic boundaries, knowing that if they are projecting onto you, you can just see it for what it is. You can have that, you know, frank, logical conversation with yourself, just knowing I need to take care of myself. I need to look after my own kids and I can't be worried about what other people think. This is a very similar energy when um, my dad years ago, he uh, broke off a friendship with a guy who he knew for like 30 years. Like we grew up with his kids. Um, they were like, I never grew up with a uh, relatives they were sort of the closest thing i had to having cousins or something like that and my dad was getting upset with his friend you know he was in a new marriage this um you know the stepdaughter was causing problems in you know my life my sister's life and all this drama just started welling up to the surface and um it wasn't until years later my dad said he's like no i told this person to fuck off because even though we were friends for 30 years, I saw his family just going down with the ship of their own bullshit. And I saw the way that it was impacting you. I saw the way it was impacting your sisters. And I said to, I said to this person, I am not letting my family go down with yours. This is somebody who has actually stepped up for themselves, stepped up for their family. And just knowing that if you hold on any longer to whatever the situation is, that you do endanger yourself, that you are endangering your family. Like, this is to encourage you to let you know, if you've spoken up for yourself, you did the right thing. Even if it didn't feel good at first, you're starting to learn how to listen to the voice from within. What kind of guidance would spirit have for you at this time? Holy swords, Batman. We got the Knight of Swords in the reverse along with water. Like, you're just being asked to, again, observe how this person's behaving. Like, as, if you're feeling a little bit regulated enough and okay enough, like, there's something about just uh, getting to know their water. Like, this is a very turbulent individual. Starting to get to know the aspects of this individual where you're starting to see it's like, oh, God. Yeah, when I used to be really involved with their bullshit, I didn't really see it. I didn't really see how it was fucking with me. I didn't really understand how this person's actions and behaviors were fucking with me. I didn't see how these actions and behaviors were heavily impacting my family. Like, having a sense of separation, even just for, for um, <laughs> a short period of time. I don't know why I want to say four. But, um... But there's something about the short period of time where you've had to like take a step back and really see the situation for what it is, realizing that pe all people have been doing is um, trying to use words to stir up your own emotions and to confuse the shit out of you. This is a manipulative individual. Now, it's kind of neat. It, this isn't the magician, and the magician can be uh, a great master of illusions when they are using their quote unquote magic in a very toxic way. Like, cause you know, again, using their career against you, using their education against you, using their, whatever they think is, makes them worthy of being on a pedestal to look down at you. Like this is all just kind of crumbling out from underneath everybody right now. Again, I keep hearing like, you're gonna have some smug satisfaction knowing that you have done the right thing for yourself. But again, some of you guys might still be doubting that moving forward is the right thing to do. And if you are struggling through that, first of all, unfold yourself and try to rest, get, you know, make sure that you're breathing. And in some ways, because I see this Hierophant right here, 
there are some teachings that made sense to you as a kid and you're being asked to revisit that now that you're all grown up, now that you don't have a, a teacher, a preacher, a pastor, a rabbi, an imam, like you don't have somebody who's telling you what you think you should believe. Um, having a fresh perspective, like even I for myself talking about the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, along with uh, how Lot had to leave in order to make sure that his family was brought to safety and allowing other people their own free will, even his own wife's free will to look behind. And he knew because his wife wasn't willing to leave, she was stuck with where she is at. And in some ways leaving our loved ones behind, that can be painful, but sometimes it's painfully necessary. This person right here more than likely has also dealt with some heavy abandonment wounding. You two are more than likely in a, um, like a karmic trauma bonded relationship where you both were in a bit of a cocoon of safety, knowing that, hey, you've been hurt and I've been hurt. So can we just have a treaty? This isn't even finding peace. This is a peace treaty. Peace treaties are not the same as peace. It's more so, um, it's more in the spirit of we hate each other, so we're going to negotiate a million different things. Like, this can be a little bit of a lawyer speak, hyper negotiation, um, coming up with way too many boundaries to the point where everyone's kind of suffocated. But this is also the energy that looks for one teeny tiny excuse for the other person to go against the law, and then they feel entitled to strike first. Like this is a very um, verbally and emotionally violent energy that you might have just been um, in a habit of engaging with. But given this is guidance, I want to get a little bit deeper just for a moment. Okay, let's go for the threads of fate because this is difficult to see. We got the card of transmute. It's t the transmute in this context is taking a really shitty situation and making something very brand new from it all. Like the scarab um, lays its eggs in actual shit because that's the most beneficial environment for its young. And in some ways, I think a few of you guys felt like you were shit, so it was okay to just bury yourself in somebody else's karmic bullshit, sort of as though, well, if I can just, you know, figure it out through their bullshit, maybe I'll figure it out with me. Like, there's some weird logic that you got into in the first place that's finally being healed out, and so you might have a difficult time trying to voice it. I keep getting this card. Like, in some ways, I'm so fucking bored of this card. We have the Seeker. Like, this is casting out into the universe what the fuck is my problem? And then the ancestors being able to throw it back at you. And in some ways you've been getting repeated messages over and over again. What's underneath here? Fate. Like there's actually something to do with your overall purpose that you have to do. Like wheel of fortune. This is the card of fate. And in some ways, a few of you guys are being asked to just forgive yourself that you got into the situation in the first place. Like, yeah, you made your bed, you covered yourself in shit and you decided this was your lot in life. But, um, some people don't get past that. And then they just lie in complacency for the rest of their life. But you don't want that anymore. You have asked, you've asked the divine, what is wrong with me? What is it that I am not seeing? And the universe keeps giving you the same answer over and over again, which is simple as I gave you this person to show you that you are worth more than how you are worth more than how you've been valuing yourself. You can move forward with your divinely orchestrated purpose, um, feeling abundant and feeling as though maybe you will get that lucky break. The one that we have right here, because, you know, good fortune and lucky can be uh, intertwined. And I think this is somebody that you aligned yourself with. You thought they were going to elevate you out of the shit. It's sort of like, well, if we're both in a shitty situation together, maybe we can elevate each other out um, together. And it was sort of a karmic idea of what partnership is supposed to be. There's nothing wrong with teaming up with somebody and kind of helping, you know, each other work each other out of a difficult situation. But the only way that works is that if you understand how energy works, you've overcome one karma, they have overcome another karma, and you have that friendship to help sort of see the blind spots in the same energy from an opposing um, position. What do we have up here at the top? The outlaw. Um, first of all, you're supposed to be yourself. 
You're supposed to do things your way. Not in that karmic, my way or the highway bullshit, um, but this is a, an energy you've aligned yourself with that hasn't allowed you to be yourself. They have corrected you. They have corrected your speech. They have told you how you are constantly wrong. This is an energy that has frequently belittled you, and unfortunately, you believed it. Why? Because you put them on a pedestal. You thought that they knew better, as opposed to working together to help each other see the blind spot and see your situation for what it is, but you are ascending. Being yourself is your ticket out of here. And also having that peace and blessedness, knowing that if being yourself is your ticket out of bullshit, that you actually do need to be yourself. That involves having clear, concise, thoughtful conversations because you can't just bully your way out of a bad situation. Some people have the karmic lie, assuming that, well, if I shoot the boat, if I treat them mediocre and they still love me at the end of the day, well, then it's a good relationship. No, no, no. Basically, you are a bully and you've been trying to cater to a bully. And this is where you had that back and forth. It's like an inner war and an inner conflict within your own home. I think a few of you who grew up with divorced parents might be a little bit triggered in this energy sort of like looking around going oh guys way to make me feel like a divorced child all over again ah! sarcasm as you are able to feel good that being yourself is the safest and most thoughtful way that you can elevate yourself out of a bad situation, knowing that the more that you hold the vision of who you know you're actually supposed to be, realizing that these external energies, all they want to do is hold you back and realizing, okay, you might have been wrong about the way that they presented themselves, it's okay. You were supposed to go through this because there was a karmic lie that the divine wanted you to see. How are you going to feel once you've released all of this? <laughs> Knight of Wands in the reverse. Nature spirits. Like, I'm just getting the sense where it's like, you just acting like your natural self. You understanding the cycles of nature. Like, like I was saying. Some of you guys are going to feel very hyped up in this energy. You may not feel completely regulated. If you find that you're hyper-focused on something, hyper-fixated, breathe, try to distract yourself, go for a walk. If you're noticing that you're very low on energy and you can't necessarily move, try to connect with source to see if your body um, can at least get a little bit of posture back. Because sometimes when we're disconnected from source, that's when we hunch over, we feel deflated, we, um, you know, that's just sort of like, you know, sit around all weekend watching cartoons and reruns for which... It's my favorite pastime, but it's one of these things. It's okay to let your body rest for a period of time, but this is kind of overcoming and just realizing, okay, I just need to be filled with love, the love of the divine, the love of source, the love of all creation. You are a beautifully created being. There is a weird ass energy out there. God, the universe, the flying spaghetti monster, the great I am who created this flesh meat vessel so that we can again play with the proverbial building blocks within the 3d stuff was left behind for those who've passed on you know into the into the other realms and you get to pick it up where you left off but the more that you honor your nature and get your lessons from nature itself you're just not going to be prone to these hyperactive energies being more mindful about how your body acts and reacts builds that safety. This person that you've been dealing with, they have dysregulated the shit out of you. And three, four, five, a few of you guys may forgot of what may have forgotten what it's like to feel calm. That's okay. We can reclaim this aspect of you. Just taking advantage of this period of time, just having like the joy knowing that if you just are yourself, even if it seems, you know, sacrilegious in your own silly kind of way, this is part of your ascension. To deny the Holy Spirit is blasphemy. And if you are holy, then why are you not listening to your own spirit? So since we're talking nature spirits, we're going to grab the uh, animal. Ooh, yeah, the uh, animal guides before I go to shuffle. We do have ant spirit. Time to collaborate. Like, you're not supposed to be operating in this reality alone. One organism 
cannot exist without the help and assistance from another organism, but you're learning the difference between something that is parasitic versus symbiotic. Whew. It's like all my like grade seven and eight science wants to come out right now. <laughs> Whoa, okay. What do we have here? You can overcome any obstacle and Nightingale Spirit says, love is all around. Ooh, I love this lion spirit. Be generous of spirit. Like, in some ways, this person has been putting you down because you are extraordinarily imitating. Um, and they've been trying to actually imitate you. They have been trying to throw in your face the a karmic variation of your divine power, your masculinized power as well. This is getting over taunting. This is getting over bullying. This is just recognizing um, the shadow self and other people and no longer feeling ashamed about it. You should never feel ashamed about the experiences that you have had within this reality. And you're not supposed to feel shame. Shame is not a truth. It is just an emotion. And you're being asked to feel it so that you can finally heal it. You're going to be collaborating with new types of teachers, new kinds of teachers, you know, some of them are going to um, trigger you in a in a lovely way, but it's only designed to help trigger out and remove old energies. Archangel Michael is here to help assist you with identifying those truths. I do see a lot of Gabriel energy in here with the Nightingale to help you tune into your and tune into your heart and be able to finally listen in and tune into the diviners that a past version of you would have rejected because of your karma, because of your pain, but you're going to start noticing different voices where it's like, I never would have paid attention to a person like that, or I would have vilified another person in the past if they spoke this way. And you're overcoming conspiracy energies, you're overcoming cult mentalities, and you're overcoming karmic feminine energy that tried to manipulate you from the inside out to try and blind you from what it was they were actually doing. Honor your journey. Honor where it is that you have come and honor where it is that you are going. You are a divine creature. You are powerful and you can be proud being the person who you actually are. I'm just saying. Whew. Well, Whoever you guys are, damn, I sincerely hope that this helped. Thank you, all of you, for sticking around. If you like my style, please make sure to like the video on the way out. And if you haven't yet, but you're kind of curious what the next message is going to be, I highly recommend that you subscribe. And until I see you guys in the next one, I'm wishing you peace, love, and all the berries. Bye!